few months ago, I came to the realization that the world map I knew so well was widely inaccurate in so many ways. Seriously, how did I spend so many years thinking Africa, with its 55 countries, was the same size as Greenland? Spoiler alert, it's not. Greenland's landmass might look impressive on the map, but in reality, it's more like a cute little snow globe compared to Africa's massive expanse. And that's not the only twist. The map we grew up with, known as the Mercator projection, stretches out the polar regions so much that Antarctica ends up looking like it could be a continent of giants. Meanwhile, places near the equator, where most of the population lives, are squished into smaller, less impressive spaces. So, not only are we seeing size distortions, but also shape distortions that make continents look like they've been through a bizarre funhouse mirror. In today's video, we'll be looking into maps uncovering the truth behind these distortions and what they mean for our view of the world. The invention of maps dates back as far as 6000 BC, with some of the earliest examples being simple representations of local terrain. Various ancient cultures around the world created these initial maps through cave paintings and engravings on stone or tusks. As civilizations progressed, so did the sophistication of their maps. By around 2300 BC, the Babylonians were crafting some of the earliest known maps on clay tablets. These early maps were surprisingly detailed, offering a structured view of their known world. The Greeks then took map making to a new height, introducing more advanced techniques. Greek scholars like Anaximander and Ptolemy revolutionized cartography by incorporating concepts such as latitude and longitude, greatly enhancing the accuracy and utility of maps. Their innovations laid the groundwork for modern mapping and helped shape our understanding of geography for centuries to come. Today, with the numerous technological advancements that have taken place, there are a variety of maps to choose from, yet none has really hacked the challenge of perfectly representing our spherical world on a flat surface. Take the Mercator projection, for instance. Introduced by Gerardus Mercator in 1569, this cylindrical projection was revolutionary for its time, allowing sailors to plot straight lines courses, which was crucial for maritime navigation. While it greatly enhanced the ease of sea travel by preserving angles and direction, it also introduced significant distortions. The map exaggerated the size of regions near the poles, making them appear much larger than they actually are while shrinking areas near the equator, leading to a skewed perception of geography. Critics have argued that these distortions were not merely technical flaws, but also served to reflect and reinforce European dominance during the colonial era, giving an inflated sense of the size of importance of Europe compared to other regions. And thus, several other map projections were developed to address these distortions. 1805, Mollweide Projection Karl Mollweide's projection aimed to provide an equal area representation preserving the relative size of land masses. However, this comes at the expense of shape distortions, particularly near the edges of the map. Land masses can appear stretched or compressed, making it less suitable for navigation purposes. 1921 Winkle Triple Projection Oswald Winkle developing this projection to offer balance between size and shape distortions. It improved the visual representation of land masses compared to Mercator by reducing the extreme distortions of both polar and equatorial regions. No, nonetheless, it still has some distortions, particularly in the high latitude regions, but offers a more aesthetically pleasing view of the world. 1969, Robinson Projection. Arthur Robinson introduced this projection to create a more visually appealing map by reducing distortions in size and shape. It represents the world with fewer extreme distortions than the Mercator and other projections. However, it compromises on accuracy, as it introduces some distortions in all areas of the map, making it less precise for detailed analysis. There isn't a one-fit-all type of map. The choice ultimately depends on the map's purpose and intended use. Today, however, platforms like Google Maps still use the Mercator projection, primarily due to its ability to preserve angles and facilitate navigation. This projection allows users to easily plot straight-line routes, which is ideal for driving directions and urban navigation. To address more complex spatial needs, the Geographic Information System GIS has revolutionized navigation spatial analysis. GIS integrates multiple layers of data, allowing for detailed mapping and analysis that can adapt to various applications, from urban planning to environmental monitoring, everyday navigation on platforms like Google Maps. The next time you glance at a map, whether it's through a road trip or when checking out the local diner, know that behind every map lies a quirky mix of history, distortion and high-tech wizardry. And most importantly, appreciate its attempt to make our round world fit into a flat view. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.